Right, I know I say this too often, but it is time for something completely different. And this time, this time I dare you to say otherwise, because we're going to try something really rather unique in the world of whiskey. We're going to try each other's blends. Mm. How, do they, how do we come to this, Dave? Well, we talk a lot on the show about Dram Fest 2020, our friendly neighbourhood international whiskey festival. And I make no apologies for talking about that a lot, because it was excellent. Mm. And part of this year's lineup was a wonderful opportunity courtesy of Shivers Regal, which was a fun little exercise whereby we talked about the process of blending our own custom blends. Mm. So they use uh, many dozens of whiskies in their own blends, but uh, so this exercise we had five to play with. Um, as the as exercise was described to us, discussed, there was a Scarpa given to us to add a floral component to the blend. 12-year-old Abelure for fruitiness. Glen Livet Founders Reserve, as reviewed on the show previously, for a citrus note. A lively Kilomen to add some smoke. And then a creamy grain whiskey from Strathclyde. Mm. Give me some volumetric flasks, a little beaker, and we got to mix and match and blend and intensify or weaken to our heart's content. Yes, and then these Rather excellent. Little, um, what I suspect mm. are over-the-counter spice bottles yeah. um, were the were the result. Mm. Um, and as you'll notice by these, um, as as Dave's lifted the um, the fodder whiskies here for the blend, these are not going to be typical blends in mm. any way because they are blends made of, in their own way, blends. Um, yeah. Normal blended whiskey, you'd be blending it from stock. These are all commercial bottles mm. um, because it would be highly naughty of us to be. Um, Blending from any sort of otherwise um, open open resource um, outside of Scotland. Um, so yes, these aren't going to be um, exactly. Yeah. Um, like, Shivers Regal is not going to jump out of this bottle, <laughs> even though they might have been hosting no. the thing, because um, enormous quantities of varied whiskies go in mm. there. Um, they don't open a bunch of off the shelf bottles mm. and mix them together as we have done here. Yeah. But um, blends, nonetheless, they are. And what we are going to do, we have. And if we have, then I've completely forgotten. I'm certain we have not tried each other's blends. No, we have not. Um, we know what's in them. The other one does not. We are going to taste each other's blends, give our thoughts on them, and make yeah. a bit of, has a bit of a guess um, what was used and in what quantity and any other sort of useful useful thoughts that come to mind. Yeah. And I think it will. It may reveal sort of the um, some intrinsic differences in the in the our whiskey sensibility. Mm. So yeah. these hundred mil sample bottles are entirely adorable, but the corks are cork mm. all the way through, so they are slightly porous. Uh, so to that end, I have stored mine inside a Pix peanut butter jar to preserve. No, to reduce the angels taking their extra yes, share. I, I did not, so I hope mine has survived. I put it in there pretty good and hard, but as you say, mm. the cork is sort of semi permeable at best. Pour so, it all the way through. Yeah. Um, um, other peanut butters are available, but uh, Pix is the best, so don't bother. Pix, huh? Yeah, I don't Pix. know. It's not a, not a, a connoisseur of many things, yes. peanut butter. No, nope. um, I will shamelessly plug Pix peanut, peanut butter. Yeah, it's just it's so good. A Nelson, aren't they? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Ingredients, yeah. peanuts. Five star health rating, so there you go. Yes. So, okay. uh, we'll uh, start off with yours. Uh, yes, let's start okay. off with Let's put those in, uh, what is our left hand mm -hmm. glass to reflect. Our so I'll just, be, I'll just be I'll having a little refresher sure. of mine, I suppose. So mm. I'll give. I understand you there. put quite a unique twist on yours. Mine? Mine was time. Mine, well, um, mine's just a little bit different. Too. Yeah, I'll be very interested to try um, it. I have, talking about um, whiskey or any other idiosyncrasies, I've lost my notes, but um, I, I, I remember them. I don't know what's in there, so that's right. So, mm. here we go. Um, we won't look at colour because they're all coloured, um, and we won't look at, oh no, no actually, Kilomen. Sorry, Kilomen, you weren't coloured. No. Um, that would be um, just perfectly ordinary. Everything else coloured, everything else mm. chill filtered. So, here we go. Mm. Oh, brings me right back to the day. There is some good minerality there. I think there's some gentle smoke, too. Yes, I'd, I'd agree with mm. that. Yeah, um, interesting. That's quite dry. There's not a lot of sweetness or fruit just yet. Setting up a, I thought setting up a bottle of Kilomen as your um, peated choice mm. was a pretty daring because yeah. you don't need to put. The moment I would say more than five percent by volume Kilomen mm. goes in there, you that's a bottle it. of Kilomen at that Purely point. Purely peated yeah. whiskey. Um, yeah. That Kilomen's mm -hmm. not. Doesn't muck around when mm. it comes to dominating other whiskies. So I think a lot of the a lot of the other people partaking in the exercise, um, I saw them going that way, good and early. And I think a lot of people walked out of there with a slightly diluted bottle mm -hmm. of Kilomen rather than a blend. Mm. 
Um, thankfully, I think we, we know a little bit better than that. So I, I don't think either of us, although I haven't smelt um, Tasted mm. Dave's yet, another of us went out overboard with the mm. old Kellerman because that would have been a rookie, rookie way to go. So, yes, this brings me back to the day. Goodness, I was, I was so sober in the morning. The morning of the Ooh. day, not, not the one after. Oh, no, there is that peat. There mm. is some, mmm, there is some charred wood, some coal smoke. That, the Kilomen has done its job. I think the Kilomen's, mmm, yeah. this is more kilomen than I remember, actually. Mm. I think the Kilomen has um, sort of been it's quietly taken over. It is fighting fighting with the, the, other, there, yeah. the other weaker whiskies. This is, I, I wouldn't have said it coming in, but this is definitely a peated blend. Mm. Um, think maybe, um, think you, Johnny Walker Black Label. Mm. I think I'd give that. I think there is a quite generous helping of grain whiskey there. There is a smooth creaminess underneath all that peat, which is possibly what held to carry the peat to a stronger extent. Potentially, potentially. It mm. certainly wouldn't be getting in its way, yeah. uh, the grain whiskey being the most gentle mm. of the ones we were providing. There is, however, some, a little bit of beeswax, a little honey, some florals. So I think there's a fair hit of, oh, what was the floral component? The scarpa. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Um, mm. I'll say I didn't use everything on the list. Oh, interesting. That's okay. the only hint. I, I was very, wow. very... Um, very spartan with some of my choices, um, some of the things mm. I did not feel the need to include absolutely everything. Alright, I think you've probably gone, oh I'd say you've gone rather light on the Ebelur and or the Glenlivet. I think at least one of those was excluded mm. entirely. Alright, any final thoughts before we reveal all about mm. the... About I think we have here a, a um, it is a grain heavy whiskey with a small but obviously significant portion of peated spirit. And then a fair whack of scarpa, and possibly an exclusion of any of the Abelor, or maybe the Glenlivet. You have, with one exception, come shockingly close. Yeah. Um, you, you're shockingly right in, let's say, two points. You're shockingly <laughs> wrong in the third. It was almost a mega dunk wow. out of that okay. one. So um, the points in which you, you really, really sconed, and I'm astonished. Mm. Um, you said I had a lot of scarpa in here, mm. and I do, because mm. I really liked that scarpa. Um, I swear I only put about 4% at most of Kilomen in here, oh. and I swear it didn't taste like this <laughs> in the beginning, but no, the Kilomen has done its, done its wicked work in here, and it has really, really muscled mm. in. It hasn't turned it into peated whiskey, but it has put it on the line of, I would say... Maybe a, a one phenol above hmm. um, Johnny Walker Black Label, which wow. is which is itself a peated, you know, peated well, blend. I just looked at my own percentages, and you'll possibly in for a bit of oh few boy, Kilomans, <laughs> Kilomans on the path. Um, Kilomans has possibly entered the chat. Yeah, my reasoning with this mm. whiskey, I tried them all before I did any hip yep. blending. Yeah, why, 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 why wouldn't you? Mm. Um, got to know what you're what you're working mm. with. And I like the Scarpa so much, mm. I just wanted to use more and more of it the more I thought mm. of it. Um, Glenfinnick Founders Reserve, <laughs> you know, yeah, not a whiskey of tremendous renown. Um, the Abelor 12, I thought, oh, it was a bit harsh, just a little bit harsh. So what I did, and this is the one bit that Dave um, mm. has gotten shockingly wrong, um, I cast aside all of the grain whiskey, Oh, wow. And all of the Abelur, I put oh. in a just a skerrick of the um, Founders Reserve hmm. um, to give it a bit of that citrus component. One skerrick and have. roughly one metric smidge. Well, we'll say it was in there at about another 5%, about as much mm. as I put in the Coloman. Yep. And um, the rest of it was nothing but Scarpa. So it wow. is a, it's not even a blend, it's a blended yeah. malt. <laughs> um, <laughs> So as to see the gentleness of the scarpa is what I yeah. was taking this for one, the grain. This was right. this is ninety percent scarpa Goodness. whiskey, um, and I thought I'd just just nuance mm. it a little bit with that little bit of little slightly sharper citrus and a little bit of peat, and oh. I thought it made a beautiful heart malt on its mm. own. It didn't even need any grain. Yeah, and um, hell, if I've got the keys to the to the to the blending warehouse. Mm. Why would I give myself a grain if I didn't have to? So mm. I decided to break all the rules and come out oh. with a blended malt. But yeah, you, you got you got the scarpa yeah. slam dunk. You got the Coloman slam dunk, and you got the absence of the mm. not just the Abelur, but also the the Founders Reserve yeah. as well. Yeah, um, um, but that's um, some bold choices, but they've paid off. It is a really drinkable yeah, blend, and I yeah. would buy it. I um, I thought it was pretty good. Mm. Not a very economical whiskey to produce, I suspect, <laughs> no. um, because in in cutting loose the um, Cutting loose the grain, I've cut mm. loose all of your savings as the person <laughs> producing this. But uh, 
Never, never shall we mind. So, mm. well, um, should we pop these glasses on stage? Yes, right. indeed. And move on to custom my custom blend. Whiskey B. Consult my notes again on exactly what's in there. Or indeed, Whiskey D. Yeah. So here we are. Colour-wise, we should mm. just have a... Ooh, exactly the same. Yeah. I don't think. I think these were all sort of rather... Um, mm. Well, some were very, very pale, or rather one was, being Cologne, the only one that probably was not coloured. Um, not sure about Strathclyde. Yep. Not quite sure where the Strathclyde came from. Mm. Um, Shivers do not... Uh, they don't own Coloman and they don't own Strathclyde. Everything else came from the Shivers um, mm. stable, as you'd expect. Um, so I suspect the Strathclyde, um, unless it's got its own bottling that I don't know about, mm. or makes up, unless that's what they put in one of those not very nice um, single grains like Hague and so on, a weird blue bottle. Um, I'm not sure where they came up with the Strathclyde, mm. but they've got it from somewhere. It wasn't cast strength though. So, what do we have here? What have we got? Well, I'm not getting blown up with heat, mm. so it hasn't completely taken over. If that was your, if that was mm. your fear, but I can pretty sure I can smell it in there. Yeah. Can't can't double down on that till I've tasted it, but I'm pretty sure Coloman is difficult to miss. Mm. And I think we're getting a wee bit of that. It's a lot. There's a lot more fruit in this one than mine, so I think there's quite a bit more. Um, Avalura deployed than um, certainly mine, which was zero because I, I didn't mm. like the Avalura. I thought that was a bit, uh, it was just a bit spiky, but harsh. Um, not worth it for its fruit, I thought. But um, we shall see. Mm. Take a sip. Mm. Oh, now there's the um, there's the Coloma. Yep. Oh it boy. Is. Yeah, very um, good. I think there might actually be a little more Coloma than mine mm -hmm. in here. Um, it's manifesting a bit differently though. Yeah. I'm getting maritime salt out of this mm. one, and I don't think I got any. I got yeah. peat, but not salt. I got a real yeah, coal smoke yeah. aspect off your one, whereas this is much more maritime. It's got more of a, like, well, more traditionally Kiloman or Bowmore. That's Bromore very characters. bizarre. That's yeah, extremely that is bizarre. interesting. There's been real whiskey alchemy happening. Mine's been in a more sealed environment mm. for longer than yours. That could be a factor. But it's possible. Also, yeah. just the sheer combination, yeah. how we've rebalanced the whiskey um, components. How peculiar. Mm, how very peculiar. All right. Well, um, what else have we got here? There's, there's certainly less scarpa, mm. um, but that's probably going to be a given. Um, I don't think anyone walked out of there with less scarpa than I did. Mm. Uh, but, or more scarpa, I should more. say. Yeah. Um, man, that Coloma is a real mess, isn't it? Mm -hmm. that's, they should have they should have got someone else. Mm. No, I've definitely gone for what you could call a peated blend here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think the the Coloman's running it more. Oof, that might be ten percent or more. I think mm. that's really it. Really is coming through. Um, the Abelou, I think, is much more present in the Founders. Well, <laughs> no. These, I think, the Abelou and the Founders are the difficult picks. Right. Um, and well, and and once it becomes less. Um, Massively overused as mine, the scupper mm. too, probably. I think the um, the grain and the um, certainly the Coloman is the, the easy one to get. Mm. I think um, Dave, I'm going to go the meta dive here. Dave, oh, yeah. being more of a um, observing the whiskey traditions, maybe with um, less flippancy than myself, probably put a sensible amount of grain whiskey in mm. there, which um, is the only info I've got there because this Coloman is making it bloody hard to <laughs> yeah. determine how much grain is going in here. So mm. I'm going to say it has between. 30-40% grain whiskey in it, mm. still making it a very, very mold dominant. I mean, you'd normally say um, the the sort of uh, the golden ratio of most blended whiskies is 40% malt, 60% mm. grain. So um, I don't know if anyone was that traditional, but uh, mm. it doesn't. It's not very grain heavy to me. So I'm saying yeah, you know, around hovering around 40% um, grain. <sighs> I think the rest is comprised of. I'm going to say the Abelour is dominant. Over the Scarpa and the, um, yeah, oh, what was it? Founders Reserve, Open mm. Um And that's, I think, that's pretty much what I've got to go on. So I'm going, right, I'm okay. going around about hovering 10% Kiloman because it's, yeah, it's definitely more than I put in. 40% hmm. um, ish grain and the balance. Um, I'm going to say not not actual brackets because I'm not that good at counting mm -hmm. to a hundred. Um, dominantly Abelure with less, and I won't say how much, just less um, Scapa and Founders Reserve 
um, sort of filling out the filling out the mix. How close did I come? Well, in some respects, you are very close. Others are a little oh, off the mark, but same, overall, same you've done story. much okay. better than I have. All right, all right. So the nature of the flasks they gave us meant I got very precise measurements. I wanted to do this as scientifically as I could, so my measurements were all precise within plus or minus about one millimeter. So here we have. I'll go in reverse order of proportionality. I guess okay, most. Okay. Abundant to least. And can you give us the, have you got the percentages there? I have indeed. Excellent, okay, because yep. I think that's, that's the only way I'll understand yeah. it. The most abundant whiskey here, a full 30% of it, is in fact the Glenlivet Founders Reserve mm. for a strong citrus backbone. And now, it's actually a bit of a tie. The next three are all in exactly the same portions. 20% of this whiskey is made of the Scarpa, Abelure, and the Grain. Mm. Yeah. So it's almost it's almost a completely level field. Yeah. And finally, you guess exactly right, ten percent is Kilomen, which has made this an abundantly peaty. Like um if anyone was trying to say prove the existence of homeopathy or something, which is obviously a lost cause, but then peated whiskey be a way to do it because you add a tiny smidge of heavily peated whiskey to an unpeated whiskey and you get a fully peated yes, whiskey. Yes, you do. It's um, bizarre, it makes no logical sense. Kilomen, but here we are. A real bully in mm. the blend. Yeah. Um, so I've gone through, yes, what is overall quite a um, citrusy and peat heavy blend. So you've, that, hmm. you've, you've really made the, the Ur blend here almost, yeah. almost, except for the Cloman, which is probably mm. a good move. You have represented everything yeah. almost in, in, you know, synchronous, synchronously mm. um, uh, with each other. So we actually have a like, pretty level feel of everything that was offered. Yeah, yeah, it's more of a chisel than a paintbrush of a whiskey. It delivers fairly hefty hits of each element. It's not as subtle or nuanced, but once I've had a big flavour, but a big distinct flavour that carries a yeah. lot of, just a lot of impact of every sip. I think what I, what I like about this is, um, even though, I mean, the peat was dominating mine at 5%. Mm. Um, that Kilomer is just a real killer, but yeah. um, at, at 10%, it's I hesitate to say it's profoundly more. Um, it doesn't. It seems as peaty. It's mm. weird. The homeopathy thing <laughs> rings very true. It's almost as peaty. Um, it's just there's maritime characters now it coming is through as well. Manifesting as a different kind yeah. of peat. Yeah. So we're doing like a like a island mist kind of a blend here. Mm. With you know we're going we're going above black label now. We're getting into maybe. Yeah. Johnny Walker double black. Um, <laughs> just stay with the stay with the Johnny Walker theme. But yeah, and the other ones. The, I still think the Abelur was, dare I say, a bad whiskey at that one. There's a, there's a harsh edge to it, which is the only point that I really, like, my only point of contention with this one, and it's the Jolly Abelur, yeah. um, again, I don't know what was wrong with that bottle. Hmm. I've had good 12-year-old Abelurs in the past, and they haven't had that harsh edge, but this one I swear it did. No, I just wanted some of that Speyside fruitiness to go against the floral and citrus notes of yeah. the Scarpa, and, um... Then live it. Mm. And there we have it. Mm. Um, as ever, we are so right and so wrong at exactly <laughs> the same time where mm. the, um, the quantum particle of competency in everything that we do. <laughs> so there we are. Consistency achieved somewhere yeah. in the middle and um, always keeping you guessing. Mm. So that has been a uh, very quirky episode here mm. from the Single More Review. Have you ever made a blend? Yeah. Do you do it routinely? I do. Mm -hmm. If I've got a big old shelf full of whiskey and I feel like something a bit different, I feel like a just a mildly peated whiskey, not mm. a hugely peated one, I'll I'll reach for my own unpeated whiskeys and add just a skerrick of my, mm. you know, bottle of Le Chigre or whatever else monstrously peated whiskey I've got lying around and make um, make a blend that lives as a quantum particle might <laughs> for just a moment in time in my glass until I drink it mm. and we've gone through and everything. Yes. I, however, never tried it before this class at Dramfest, so this was a good eye opener and just a bit of straight up honest fun with whiskey. Yeah. And I'd hardly recommend it. You've got a bunch of different models of different regions. Uh, give it a go. Yeah. See what you make. Tell us about it. Um, you won't lose anything mm. in the process. Um, I mean, if you do it wrong, mm -hmm. go and dunk in the peated whiskey, as we found out, then you might end up with more peated whiskey. Mm. But um, yeah, that's, that's, not, that's not a minus. It's you not a zero-sum game. So yeah, you've yeah. just ended up with more of one than the other. Mm. But never mind. So yeah, cheers for Shivers for um, bringing some incredible uh, sort of distraction and diversity mm. to the Whiskey Festival, um, for being a bit hands-on. Goodness, they um, hats off to the man running that um, running that uh, little show amongst mm. this seething crowd of people and trying yeah. to keep everything um, 
keep everything uh, rolling along smoothly. It was uh, it was not not an easy task as the day wore on, especially. But anyway, anyway, so that's um, Dramfest. It just keeps on coming. Can yes. we milk anything more out of it? Probably. Check back next time. Slanger, this has been the Singer Mott Review. Stay safe out there. We will be right back. <laughs>